So what we have here is a schematic for a standing pilot gas-fired steam boiler. We have our 120 volts coming in through our burner switch. Our switch is on right now. We have 120 volts on a leg here, and this is our neutral here. Now, if you look down over here, we have our pilot light is already lit, and this is important because that flame hits the thermocouple and that thermocouple generates a DC millivolt signal that goes back to the gas valve and this millivolt signal allows the gas valve's main solenoid to open when it's powered so that we can actually fire up the boiler that flame is not lit our gas valve will not open so even if our whole circuit is powered the boiler will do nothing if that pilot light is not lit so if you ever walk into a boiler and it's not doing anything that's one of the first things you want to check going back we have our transformer here now this transformer is a little different than the transformers you would find in say an air conditioning system or a furnace um, this is a terminal bus it has different lettered terminals on it um, some of these terminals do mean something a little different than what you would see in an AC or a furnace, and we'll go through that. But you can see this little glowing ball of light, and that is the 24 volts on our transformer where our low voltage control begins. Now, our power from here is going to go to two different places. First, it's going to go up to the R terminal on our thermostat. Now, obviously, our thermostat is our control device that calls the boiler into operation whenever we need heat. The second place it's going to go is up to this vent damper here. Now, this power stops at the vent damper. It doesn't go anywhere else. It is waiting for this vent damper to close, which activates a switch and will allow that 24 volts to travel on to the gas valve. So you can see there's four wires coming out of this damper. We have one power wire going in, and over here we have another wire coming out going straight to our gas valve. So our gas valve is powered off of that R terminal through a switch and a damper. But it's not gonna travel through the damper until the damper's actually closed. Let's go back to the thermostat. The thermostat will call for heat, so let's go ahead and turn that on. And on a call for heat, the thermostat will send a signal from its R terminal and send it to the W terminal on the thermostat. And from the thermostat, a white wire will go down to this G terminal on the transformer. So let's focus on this red highlighted area right here. All this is is a transformer with a relay below it. Now you can see the 24 volt signal from our thermostat goes down to this G terminal and it doesn't seem to go anywhere else. It, there's no connection to any other terminals. What this does is it actually connects to the relay down below. It's a 24 volt coil. It works a lot like a contactor in a condensing unit on an air conditioning system. So you have your 24 volt signal coming from your thermostat on that G terminal. It goes through the relay and then it comes back on that Y terminal. And when the relay activates, it closes a switch and allows high voltage to go through it. Now you can see in the schematic here, we have a circulator pump hooked up to that high voltage. Now steam boilers don't use circulator pumps, they're steam, um, they're not hydronic boilers, but these relays give you the option of hooking up a circulator pump if say for example you have a domestic hot water storage tank or you can have a hydronic zone with baseboard for a hot water loop for heating that's controlled by a zone valve so it's kind of a combination between a steam and hydronic system. But we're not going to get too deep into accessories so from the g terminal we go through this relay and we get to the y terminal and this y terminal begins the safety circuit now from our y terminal one of the first things that's going to go to are you can see the additional limits here in our schematic um, that is going to be our low water cutoff now you might see an older float style low water cutoff you might see an electronic one but either way, they're just like a basic switch that opens on a low water condition and kills this circuit. Now you might see a automatic water feeder that's powered off of these low water cutoffs. I do have a video that goes into the weeds on that. I will link it in the description below if you want to check that out. But from there, our signal is going to go to our spill switch. Now a spill switch is a thermal limit. You will usually find that switch on a hood of a flue pipe some boilers they might actually have like a little box on the back of the boiler where the flue pipe comes out and that's where the spill switch will be located basically what this for is a temperature limit for the flue pipe itself if it ever to overheat 
it would also open this circuit and kill the boiler. So if your flue pipe was obstructed, there's something stuck in the chimney, or maybe even the flue damper itself was closed, that flue pipe is going to start getting hotter and hotter and it'll activate that limit switch. From there, we go to our limit control. Now, this is our pressure troll. This uh, maintains pressure within the boiler in an operating range that we would like. So there's a cut-in pressure and there's a cut-out pressure. So, for example, um, we might want the boiler to cut in at a half a pound of pressure when the thermostat's calling for heat, and we would want the boiler to cut out on, say, pound and a half of pressure, so we don't want to overpressurize the boiler. So as long as there is a call for heat, this pressure troll will maintain pressure inside the boiler between half a pound and one and a half pound and it'll just shut the boiler on and off so long as there's a call for heat until the thermostat is satisfied. Now from there we're going to go to our flame rollout and this is another temperature limit. It sits down by the burners themselves so if the flame were ever to roll out the bottom of the boiler it would sense that extra temperature and kill this circuit. From our flame rollout, it will now go up to the vent damper, and as it travels through the vent damper, it closes a switch. It will then continue on back to the common terminal on the transformer. Now, once this switch closes, it allows the 24 volts from our R terminal to now continue on straight to our gas valve. Our main solenoid will activate. The gas valve will open the main gas and the boiler will fire up and that circuit completes back on the comm terminal on the transformer. And that is the complete circuit for a standing pilot gas fired steam boiler. So not every single steam boiler is going to be wired exactly like this. You're going to see some variations out there. And in my next video, when I cover spark ignition with control modules, I'm going to show you what those exceptions are. Uh, for example, you might see the low water cutoff in between that R terminal on the transformer and the thermostat. So it's kind of cuts off the thermostat when the low water condition. Uh, you might see some of these controls in the safety circuit in a slightly different order, but it's the same principle. You might see transformers without relays, and we're going to cover all that in the next video. So I hope I see you guys over there. Thanks for watching.